Hi, welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Gronke, and today we're going to be talking about creating an XML file using the row set method in People Code. Okay, using the row set method in People Code, what we do is we create a row set, we populate it with data, then we hand it to a delivered PeopleSoft app package, which returns us a string that is pure XML that will write that one string to a file and now we have our XML file. So you're thinking to yourself, well, I can just use PS Query. Please stop, that's horrible, okay? You're cheating yourself and you're cheating your users and clients. Query is inefficient. As per Oracle support, if you have a large report, large data set, they prefer you to use XML file, not PS Query or some of the other methods. Why? PS Query, you have to eat the elephant in one bite. All the data has to be there in every row, including the summary and detail level in the query, making it large and inefficient to parse. Two, your query has to be public for users to get the report. If it's not public, they can't see the report unless that report is specifically for that one user alone, and it's rare that you create those. Three, since your query is public, other users with query editor access can get out there and change your data set and break your report or change the outcome of your report, including other developers who might just see it and try to use it with modifications too. So better option is XML file. We create it, it's fast, we deliver it to the engine, and we can put it anywhere we want without all the overhead of PS Query. My favorite places to put BI published reports are inside the application on the pages where the user would like to see it, rather than some round the barn place where they have to go to PS Query, BI Publisher, run the thing and the query and put parameters in. They don't wanna do that. Click the button, it pops up for them. They can do with it what they want. If it's a large report, run it from the process scheduler. Still, XML file, and particularly XML file, and not PS Queries. Before we get into the details, let's see where we're going with this. Okay, we have a custom page component to show creating an XML file with a row set. We're gonna click this, our file name is gonna generate there, and we're gonna copy our XML string to this box right here. We're also gonna pop up our XML file to a new window. So let's see how that works. Okay, here's our XML file. It appears formatted, but that's Google Chrome doing the formatting. It's really just one long string in that file. Here we see the file name and the string we pasted to the desk or long field, and this is one long XML string. Let's take a look at that file in the directory. We'll put our directory here, click find, and here is the file we just created. Again, that's our file. So using the Rochet method, we created an XML string, we copied to a file, and we popped it out to the new tab. Okay, let's first take a look at this app package that we're gonna use for several of our demonstrations. And the bottom line is this, this just loads up a parent-child row set with employee data and that employee's training for a letter out to the employees. So let's take a look at the class load test data. Standard class, we have our constructor, and our constructor does nothing. So we really didn't need it there. The heart of this is the load test data set method. And you'll notice that method returns a row set, not a string, but actual row set. So this method down here, load employee image, is for a later session we're going to have. We're going to show you how to put employee photos into row sets as base64 strings and push them into BI Publisher. But not now. Stay tuned. So let's look at our load test data set. Our variables, our records we're declaring here. We're gonna do one of the great things we can do with the row set method, and that is enriching the data after we do our initial pull, which is so much better than query because query, you have to eat everything in one byte. We can get a little bit and then go and enrich just that little bit faster and much more efficient. So here we create the rows, complex row set. You know that when we create a parent-child, we have to start with the child row set. And then once we have the child row set, we create the parent row set with the child row set as a parameter. We have 
fill because it's a created row set. It's not it. He select. It's a fill. And we're saying, give me all the employees that start with KU00 and have training. Now, once we have that parent filled, we have all those rows, but none of our child row sets are populated. So let's go each one in turn for I equals one to row set employees active row count. And for each row of the parent, we're gonna come down here, get the child row set, and then fill that row set where the employee equals the parent. So here's the cool stuff. Just to show you some examples, this is maybe not the best example, but we can do it here. Get data from other records per each record and row and start populating that where it's significant to that data. Here, we're getting some job information for that employee, okay? Here, we're getting some location information for that employee. We're going to location table, put the location information, get select by key effective date, and then we're setting the location description to description from the table. All right, some company information, the company description to put it in there. We're going to look at the job code information for that employee, the job code description. Now, granted, somebody's saying there, yeah, we could have done with that with PS Query with a massive five table join and stuff. However, I wanted you to show you how you could do it here quicker, and more efficient, and you don't bog down your database with one huge bite. You don't have to eat the whole elephant in one bite. At the end there, we return a row set. We're going to start talking about the XSD file. So here's our page. We want to put all our code in the field change event behind the field on this button. So we know that's our work record and our field change people code. So let's start adding some code. Put up our documentation. PXXP XML Gen is the PeopleSoft delivered app package that will take your row set and deliver back your XML string. Take a look at that. And what we're gonna use is this class here, this row set DS, get schema, get XML data. These are the methods we're gonna use that returns our XML and XSD files. Come back to our field change event. This is our app package that loads our test data. This generates the class information in our row sets. Okay, let's declare our variables. We're assigning that variable, our object, our class, and our row set XML generator. We have our files. We have our row set to receive the loaded row set from our app package. We have strings for our XML and XSD strings plus the fully qualified file name pass for the files we create. Okay, and then we assign the fields on the page of the file name and the desk along where we're, going to, where we're going to show the XML and XSD on the page for you. This is loading our test data, all of our employees and their training. Now let's instantiate XML generator object. Now we're going to create our XSD string is the string is the generator with the get schema method, the argument being our row set that we loaded up there in the load test data object. Let's open our file. We're writing the string to the file in one write. Now, before we close our file, we want the properties of name contains the fully qualified path to that file. We're gonna save it in that string. Now it's time to close our file. Let's assign the file name and the XSD file to the fields on the page. Let's see how that works that much right now. Okay, we come to our page. So, we have our XSD and our file, fully qualified path to our file. Now let's pop that XSD up. Pop up the XSD, we're gonna use the attachment function side of people code. So we're gonna put attachment to our custom record and all that record is the file attach, detach sub record. And we're gonna give it the fully qualified file name path and key it on its name. Commit to clear the think time functions. And then we're gonna pop that up, find the key, and this is what it will be called in the new tab. Let's see how that works. Row set, pop up the new tab, and you can see our 
XSD file there. Again, Chrome is formatting this, not the file. The file is unformatted. Here we have the file name and the actual XSD string. Come out here to the log file utility, and we can see that our latest file, the roasted XSD, is out there in our files directory. So let's come here and create our XML file rather than the XSD. We're going to take all this, get rid of it. We're going to start with instantiating the XML generator object. And then with the generator object, we're going to hand it our row set that we created up and it's going to return us an XML string. Let's set our file object. Always use UTF as your character type. Uh, the standard ASCII really has some problems with some of the XML. Write our string to the XML file. Now, before we close our file, again, we're going to the file object's name property that will give us the fully qualified path to our file. And then we close our file. And then we're gonna assign the fields on the page, the XML file string and the fully qualified path string to our file. Let's see how that looks so far. We'll save, come back to our page and click on our row set button. Now, here's our file. Here's our XML string. You can see it is not formatted. Come back to our log file utility. You see our row set file XML is there. Coming back to our code, let's pop this to a new tab on the browser. So we're gonna again use our put attachment function with our fully qualified path to our custom attachment record. Commit work so we can clear our think time functions. And the view attachment function is gonna pop this to a new tab. Let's see how this works for us. Okay, click our button. We have our formatted XML file, our file name and the XML file string that was generated from the delivered app class. And our row set XML file is now out in our file server. So we created a row set, we loaded it, enriched it, Push it to PeopleTools delivered app package returning an XML string, which we push to a file. And that string we put in a page and also pop the file up to a new tab. So you have everything you need. As always, like and comment below, and please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you next time here on PeopleTools Tech Tips.